Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim is a game with hundreds, maybe thousands of items at the player's disposal. Some are abundant, some are rare, and many are unique. However, there are a few items, spells, and armors that exist in the game, but can't actually be obtained or equipped by the player. Most of these items were meant to only be used by specific NPCs. Others may have been content that was planned to be in the game, but was ultimately cut. Or items only supposed to be used by the developers. Regardless, today we'll be taking a look at five unobtainable items in The Elder Scrolls V. Starting off, we have Shiagorath's outfit. Shiagorath is the Daedric Prince of Insanity and all things crazy, who can be met during the quest, The Mind of Madness. In that quest, he wears a unique suit that's covered in these very colorful patterns that really reflect the deity's all over the place personality. In my opinion, it looks pretty cool, which is why I was so disappointed to find out that the Dragonborn never gets a chance to acquire this outfit for themselves. However, thanks to the wonders of console commands, such is not a problem. When spawned into your inventory, Shiagorath's outfit will bear the same figure as fine clothes, weigh you down by one carry weight, offer a whopping zero damage protection, and sell for 25 septums. When equipped, Shiagorath's outfit will only occupy the player's chest apparel slot meaning you can also wear separate bracers, helmets, and boots on top of this costume. Though the outfit's long sleeves create some clipping issues when bracers are stacked on top. Further illustrating that the player really was never meant to have access to this item, when wearing Chiagorath's outfit and entering first person, you'll notice a weird inconsistent pattern on your wrist, implying no first person textures were actually created. Coming in at number two, we have something that is about to be just plain silly. You'll see what I mean in a second here. Nocturnal's clothes and hat. These are technically two separate items, but one of the same set. Nocturnal, much like Shiagorath, is a Daedric Prince, whose domain is secrecy and the night. She can only be seen on one occasion during a Thieves' Guild quest, and is wearing quite the revealing costume. In fact, it's probably the most exposing outfit in the entire game, which is why so many would find themselves upset to learn that there's no real way to get a hold of these robes without console commands. But as you can probably tell, that's not gonna stop us. Should you force equip it in the game, Nocturnal's clothes combined will weigh the player down by zero points, sell for zero gold, and offer zero damage protection. So if you're trying to get a hold of this item, you can't pretend it's for the brilliant stats. But that lack of usefulness completely goes out the window when you decide to force the outfit on a male NPC. You see, Nocturnal's clothes were obviously created with a female character in mind, but due to the way Skyrim's creation engine works, all clothing types have to be equippable for both genders. So when equipped on a male body type, Nocturnal's clothes will instead transform the character's body mesh to have an <clears throat> inflated chest, if you will, as well as lead to some considerable clipping errors. Generally, what Bethesda does is they have two types of outfits for both genders. Nocturnal's clothing, not so much. Only exacerbating this armor's strangeness is that it cannot be unequipped, meaning if you decide to equip this armor on a male character and then decide you want to go back to normal, you'll have to completely reload a separate game save. Next on our list is the Giant's Club. This weapon is, obviously, most seen in the game being used by Giants, and is best known for its leading role in Skyrim's space program. Unfortunately, as so many players have probably been disappointed to discover, you can't pick up a Giant's Club after you kill those who wield it. Well, thankfully, the game does technically have Giant's Clubs registered as weapons that you can equip, should you spawn them in. You may be surprised to know that when a human uses a Giant's Club, it behaves like a greatsword, and the animations you make when you swing it will appear as such. The Giant's Club will deal 230 damage to enemies, making it among the more powerful weapons in the game. It'll also weigh you down by 18 points and sell for 1 gold at merchants. It's also sadly not possible for a player to launch other NPCs in the sky when using this weapon. That ability appears to be exclusively reserved for giants. Fourth on our list, we have Sun's Armor. Sun is an abnormally large NPC that you first encounter in Sovngarde. He guards the bridge to the Hall of Valor. However, Sun's size isn't the only thing unique about this mystical Nord. He also carries a unique set of armor that, for whatever reason, leaves most of his chest and upper body exposed, which doesn't seem to be the most practical thing to do. But, nonetheless, it has 29 damage protection, 0 carry weight, and a value of 0 gold. Despite the armor being scaled to match Sun's size, when equipped by the player, everything seems to fit just fine. It'll only take up your chest slot, so helmets, boots, and bracers can all also be equipped when you're wearing this piece of armor. However, similar to Shiagorath's outfit, Sun's apparel seems to have bracers preloaded into its mesh, so equipping your own bracers will create some weird results. When wearing Sun's armor and then proceeding to go into first person mode, you'll notice that your hands will sort of just be floating there, as Bethesda didn't design any first person textures for this apparel. Furthermore, when in your inventory, Sun's armor will have the same appearance as Thieves' Guild armor, and when equipped on a female character, it'll simply revert to using that same Thieves' Guild armor model, rather than do anything crazy like Nocturnal's robes did when given to the other gender. 
And as an honorable mention before we get to the end, there's the Fade Other spell. This expert level illusion spell would have allowed the player to turn other NPCs invisible for up to 30 seconds. However, seems to have been cut out from the game. If you force unlock the spell via the console and proceed to cast it on a child, they'll say some hidden dialogue that can't otherwise be heard, exclaiming, quote, Hey, I'm see-through now. And finally, concluding this list, we have the Polymorph Skeever spell. This unacquirable spell will turn the caster into a literal skeever for an indefinite period of time. Once casted, the player can't block, attack, or interact with any items, except for chests, and there are some very notable camera issues that really hinder your view. According to its description, the spell is only supposed to last for about 60 seconds. However, when used with console commands, its effects will never go away, period, and you'll be forced to reload a previous game save if you wish to return to normal. Furthermore, NPCs such as Bandits and Forsworn will still respond to the player hostily if caught in Skeever form, and you don't move any faster when the spell's enabled. So there's not much real purpose to using this spell in vanilla. It's possible that Bethesda originally intended for it to have some sort of practical use, like helping the player squeeze into tight spaces or sneaking past enemies to steal from their chests. However, all it is now is a rightfully scrapped and buggy mess. However, with that, we are going to wrap up. Previously, I did a video very similar to this one on Fallout 4's unobtainable items, and you seem to really like that one. If you enjoyed this video, however, like ratings are, as always, very much appreciated. And what unobtainable items do you know of in Skyrim? There's quite a few more than what I touched on today. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.